42% of people in the United States deal with an overweight or obesity problem. You probably know someone that is uh, struggling with this issue. Our next guest will answer the questions of obesity and overweight and the health consequence on our next episode, Heroines of Faith. Greetings, beloved sisters in Christ, loved and chosen by the Almighty God. Welcome to our second episode of the series, Heroines of Faith. And we have in studio today a very dear lady to our hearts, uh, Sister Erica Francois. She is the wife of our Executive Secretary, Pastor Pierre Francois. Welcome, Sister Erica. And thank you for having me come in today. Thank you so much for this opportunity. It is so good to have you. It is good to have you. Uh, we're going to talk about today a topic that is so relevant to women. Uh, you were telling me before that five, four out of five women from the African-American community suffers from obesity yes ma'am and we all struggle with that yes, ma'am. i'm a little petite uh i want to say five one but i just play five <laughs> <laughs> and i struggle with that myself um i know that you are um, an expert on this subject of obesity um tell us a little bit about your experiences uh, as as a professional in the area So currently I work um, in bariatric surgery at Tampa General Hospital in Tampa, Florida. Um, bariatric surgery is um, when you're talking about like the sleeve gastrectomy or the Roux and Y gastric bypass. So my job is uh, I'm supposed to get the patients ready for surgery. There usually is like a list of items they're supposed to do prior to surgery. They have to get blood work done. They have to meet certain criteria to be considered and for an insurance to cover the surgery. Um, obesity and they they still consider this like an elective surgery however obesity was recently um, considered like an actual disease as a diagnosis um, within the American um, Medical Association so this is a disease now that we are fighting like you mentioned earlier four out of five African-American women are considered obese um, 49% of the entire population um, of the United States It's, con it's considered obese and this is up 10% from you know 10 years ago so it's continuing to rise if we don't you know of course do something about it and and not only is affecting women like you say but also children children correct? yes one out of five children are considered obese uh, and uh, due to you know there's a lack of activity at school they're not as mobile as they used to be before and, and you know of course during the pandemic we've all been home tucked away not really going out too much and there's not a lot of activities going on and when we talk about obesity we usually think about how we look right appearance, oh, of course right appearance, right, right. right but what else is involved with obesity Oh. how else is affecting us yes obesity can uh, uh it affects every part of our, our body. Um, it can lead to stroke, it can lead to diabetes, heart disease, hypertension, high cholesterol, all are associated with um, obesity. Um, and what we, we have seen like after a patient has surgery, a lot of times their diabetes, we don't really say it goes away, but more so goes in remission. Um, they no longer need to be on their antihypertensive medications anymore, just from losing approximately 5% of your body weight can decrease, they found this out recently, can decrease the um, a woman's likelihood of de developing breast cancer up to 12%. So, you know, I didn't know that part, mm -hmm. that obesity was related to breast, breast cancer. cancer. Yes, How's that? Yes, uh, yes ma'am. Um, according to, you know, the, the research with the amount of adipo adip adipose tissue, or uh, for lack of a better term, to fat tissue can increased amount of cancer cells in our bodies. 
And how what we eat is re related to obesity? Yes. So what we put in our, our bodies there, we try not to call um, certain foods bad foods. What we'll just say some are higher in calories or higher in sugar than other other foods. And, you know, it's amazing. You know, we carry the health message. However, we have to be careful even so with some of the substitutes that we have for for meat. Um, some of the substitutes that we have for, for sugar can also be dangerous and lead to their high in fat as well and can lead to obesity as well. So we really have so to be careful. So when, when we look for um, vegetarian meat, for example, <laughs> what, what are we looking for on a label that would help us to decide whether or not we should be eating whatever we are want to eat. You definitely want to make sure you're looking at, of course, the sodium level and, and a lot of the um, substitutes that it's very, very high. It could be up to 200, 400 milli milligrams. Um, and so you really want to be careful of that. Also, food, we need to find foods that are rich in protein. And they do, so, uh, some of the substitutes do have a good a source of protein in them as well. But of course, we get our protein from the, from beans um, and sometimes even fr from, you know, some of the meat, the turkey, the ch chicken, fish uh, can sometimes even be a healthier option than some of the substitutes that we use that are, you know, these things are genetic, you know, they're made in a factory and made in a lab. So we really have to be careful of what we're putting into our body. <laughs> that is amazing. And how about when, when, when we have children and they want to buy juices and they want to drink the juice that you see at the store, yes. what would you say about that? I would say <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, there are, um, I particularly like, um, for my for my kids of course water is all, water is always the first option what i always will you try to get things lower in sugar at least um per serving it should be like at least less than 10 grams of sugar um per ser serving there are some um flavored waters as well that you know they're okay with it just add like a little bit of flavor to it we can also infuse you know our water with mint and lemon and um, makes it very refreshing. So if you want to change it up, you get a little bit bored with water sometimes, you can infuse it with fruit. That is great. So mm -hmm. we don't have to settle for just to say we're not <laughs> going to have anything to drink. You can, you can flavor your water with yes. natural herbs, correct? Right. That is great. And um, w you mentioned before that we have the health message. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we think that because we are in church, because we are exposed to the health message and to so many other uh, good information that we might not suffer the same thing that people that don't have our knowledge mm -hmm. do. Um, how how do you answer that question? Yes, so Sister Esmeralda, you would be surprised. I'm sure you visit a lot of churches. We, you know, with um, Pastor Francois being, you know, um, in his position of being a pastor, we visit a lot of churches. And a lot of times you will see these uh, plates are, it's all starches. <laughs> you know, why do we have to have macaroni, cheese, and rice, you know, and, and cornbread, mashed you know, and mashed potatoes, <laughs> and, the, and the roll, you know. So where, where are the vegetables? And it's okay to have a plate full of vegetables, you know, and beans. And you, you, we, we would be so satisfied, you know, with that. But <laughs> we, so t tell us in a minute, Sister, Sister Erica, what would be an ideal plate for you? Uh, you mentioned the starch and, and everything that we put together. What, what would be an ideal plate for you? An ideal plate for me. So I just to be realistic, you know, I, <laughs> I, you know, I do eat our clean meats, right? Um, would be like, you know, chicken breast or turkey um, along with vegetables. I prefer, you know, two to three vegetables on, on my plate. And you can have a starch. It's okay. But let's try to choose something more so like a sweet potato or a baked potato or something like that. And if you have to have the rice, too, they also now have like, you know, like the cauliflower rice, uh, which is not not bad at all. You know, we have to, you know, fix it up a little bit, get a little garlic powder, things like that. But and but it's a, it, it ends up being pretty tasty. But if you want to have the regular rice, 
that's fine too but we should make sure that does not consume our whole entire plate <laughs> that is great that is great advice sister erica why are you so passionate about this topic of obesity why is so personal to you so um i'm working in this population um has real with this population has really shown me they're often ridiculed they're picked on you know you're fat because you're you eat too much and that oftentimes that's not sometimes that's not the case you know we have to um, also look at sometimes it's hereditary genetics different diseases um, they might have a type of pituitary gland problem a thyroid issue that's causing the weight gain um, or there's certain medications that actually you know may uh, may you make you at a higher risk for weight gain as well I see so, and and you were telling me before that you went through these experiences as well correct 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 so um after my our last child i had gotten up to up to a weight if i if i may i you know i'll be transparent i had gotten up to 210 pounds 210 pounds and, and like you that's just, a lot of right. pounds exactly and like you mentioned sister esmeralda we are you know we are we have a low ceiling and so <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, find out next how Sister Erica was able to lose 70 pounds and, and, and be this beautiful model oh, that we have you. here today. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. We live in a world where undernutrition and obesity can exist side by side in the same country, home, or even person. Foods high in sugars, salt, and or unhealthy fats are leading to unhealthy diets and are one reason why children may not be growing healthily while causing other people to develop overweight or obesity. The consumption of unhealthy diets is heavily influenced by marketing. Easy access is fueling this new nutrition reality. But thankfully, change towards a healthier future is possible. By having a sustainable healthy diet made up of a variety of foods that are safe for consumption, we can promote health and have better abilities to fight illness. How do we do this? Good nutrition for women during pregnancy and for children in their first 1,000 days of life, including breastfeeding, sets them up for healthy adulthood and future generations. We should eat more fresh fruits and vegetables, whole grains, pulses, nuts and seeds, and less sugary drinks and foods high in sugars, salt and unhealthy fats. The less of these foods we buy, the more the food industry will be encouraged to produce foods that contribute to healthy diets. We can also call on our leaders to make the right decisions so that every person everywhere can afford and access good nutrition. When people like you and me industries and governments work together to make positive changes, we can create a healthier world. Welcome back. We are talking with Sister Erica Francois, Heroines of Faith, and this is a very fascinating topic, uh, obesity. Before we went on a break, you were saying that you gained 250 pounds, right? 210, 210. 210, 210. <laughs> 210 pounds and then you were saying that you lost 70 pounds yes. tell us a little bit how did you get to the point of 210 pounds and most of us women struggle with us um i have areas that i would rather not people not to see it, right, right? right i would right. struggle with that right. what was the struggle for you like and so um as i mentioned i um it was during pregnancy so um that i had you know gained the weight and of course and i you know again i'm i'm an open book so during pregnancy i i was like preeclamptic like i had i was starting to show signs of it my blood pressure was going up i had some swelling going on and to the point where they did have to take my daughter i had to um i was induced at 30 35 weeks 36 mm -hmm. weeks because of this and because of the you know the weight gain and so after 
um, having her and, you know, thank God she's healthy, alive and well. And um, yeah. after ha having her, I, I did not, I still like struggle. They put me on um, blood pressure medication and I went on not really taking care of myself. It was, the focus was on my children. Um, and that's, that's all I like really worried about was you know my children my oldest son and then now we have this newborn baby and we at the time we were living in Georgia so we were by ourselves no not a lot of family my my mom you know she would come and visit and come and help out and my other family members would come and help um so I, it was all about you know the kids and work and kids and work and so I wasn't really watching you know what I was eating I just grabbed something on the go, going through fa the fast food lines. Um, and, you know, we're talking about Georgia here, like good Southern cooking, you know, where you got the collard greens, in, which we think are, you know, good vegetables. But once you put all the meat and the oil and all of that in there, it's not so much anymore. And eating these like foods that are very high in fat. I had never had fried biscuits before until, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we moved, we Never moved heard of fried biscuits, fried biscuits right? So we moved to Georgia and, and, you know, it was good, you know, and just not really watching what I was, I was eating. And I, I, talk, I mentioned before too, sometimes um, weight gain can occur, uh, you know, of course, in, in um, eating calories in excess, but also hereditary, um, different disease processes such as polycystic ovarian syndrome where we become insulin resistant things like that can cause weight gain when you your thyroid level um, your thyroid is not working properly can cause weight gain stress can cause weight it can at I'm times anti also right right because you have an increase in cortisol levels which can uh, cause weight gain as well when when you realized that you were that you when you saw yourself in the mirror and you said this is this is not me this is way too much how did you feel so this is what happened we moved back to florida to tampa and i um applied for a job at where i am currently bariatric surgery and when you are start a new position they have you go through like a pre-employment pre-employment process I did not know at the time that my cholesterol was through the roof. They would not allow me to start working until I was under a doctor's care. Really? And that's when I had like the emotional breakdown, like, oh my goodness, I'm a healthcare provider and I'm not taking care of myself. Um, and that's when, you know, it kind of just really hit home for me uh, at that moment when they said, you can't start working. And I, how, how do you feel? Uh, I just totally upset and like how did I let myself that was the first question I asked myself how did I let myself get this far you know and what was I thinking what was I doing you know <laughs> to, to allow this to happen as a healthcare provider as a Christian that I know my body is supposed to be a temple and I'm just you know totally disregarding all of that what do you do so um went to my the, the, they had me go see a, the doctor and i said can you just please just give me three months just give me three months before you put me on any type of medication or something like that for my cholesterol please just get, allow me three months there where i was working there's a dietitian she was there and she said i will help you um so we put together like a food plan um, different foods that help us like a high fiber diet that also helps with bringing down the um, your cholesterol levels of course starting to exercise my sister she took me to spin class and that's like you know bike riding and I was so embarrassed because I felt like I was the biggest person in the room um, not really knowing like nobody's really paying attention to me, you know, but you just feel that way when you walk into a room that people are talking about you or, oh my gosh, look at her. She can't even get on the bike by herself, things like that. When, when, um, and, and I mean, by being as so active as you are, you, you <laughs> sing in the praise team in the <laughs> choir, you play the piano, you are involved in children's ministries, you're involved in almost quite a few ministries in the church. How, when, when you when you looked yourself in front of my mirror and you were trying to get dressed and to go out, how, how did you feel? How, how did you process the fact that I'm short and this big person? And as brother, I did, and I'll be honest with you, I would get dressed. 
And, and I thank you. I'm sorry. I thank you for allowing me to ask no, these no. transparent questions no. because I'm sure there are people out there, women oh, like us, definitely. that are struggling most with this. Most definitely. And that's why I, I'm here to share, to share. I would literally get dressed on Sabbath morning and I would look myself in the mirror and then and get right back in the bed. I would not want to go out. So what you're saying is that you got dressed and you and my, saw yeah. yourself and you said, I'm not going out. I'm not going to church. I'll just, you know, watch from home or I'll let me just take the kids out. And I wouldn't even blame it on the kids. Oh, you know, the baby's not feeling well. You know, I, so I'll just stay home. I did not want to go out because I feel, felt like all eyes would be on me. Oh, how does she let herself get that way? Oh, look at her, you know, so... I was just stay home, you know. <laughs> how did you overcome that? How did you, uh, how did you get to the point where you said, "I cannot continue like this. I have to do something about it. I'm gonna get up and be the best I can be for myself and my children and my family." Through much prayer, through much prayer, and I would get up, have my devotion, get up in the morning and pray, and follow the plan that the dietitian and at the time there was a doctor in the office as well that um, where I worked and he helped me as well. And when you have like a support system around you, my husband embraced the idea. He never like really let me down. Uh, according to him, it, you would think he, I look like a, uh, an hourglass. Well, you are a very you know? beautiful woman. <laughs> Even yes. at 210 mm -hmm. pounds, he never body shamed me or anything. Mm -hmm. Um, but he would support me. Okay, you want to go for a walk? You want to go spend? I'll watch the kids. You go and exercise with your sister or your family. You go, go ahead. I have the kids. And he was would not bring in, you know, the apple turnovers, the donuts, and everything into the house. We totally changed. We cleaned out our pantry. We cleaned out the refrigerator. Um, that with me also losing weight, and as you can tell, and most people probably can tell, if you know Pastor Francois, he lost weight as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he was bragging about it. I remember he's doing a tour of some of the churches. Right. And he was talking about how his wife got into this um, a great plan and everybody in the family is trying to eat better yes. and all of that. So congratulations <laughs> on that. You. So with having the support and and it's so good to have like a good support system. It, yes. you, you will reach your goals um, and be able to accomplish it a lot easier um with when you have the support of you know your family your husband and ev and everyone and so now i'm able to when i see my patients i let them know you know they were like you don't know how i feel i'm like yes i do you know i still struggle you know i still want when the light comes on at Krispy Kreme, i still want to turn in and go and get the, you know the hot donut <laughs> so you know that it's still a, a struggle for me too and you know i have developed relationships with my patients and i think because of that because i know how they feel and i'm able to tell them you know different hey this is what i try here's the protein shake that i drink why don't you try it and they can't believe wait you do this stuff too that you're telling us yes i have to practice what i preach or teach you know as well because if i don't you know i, I want you to succeed too so um that's it's, that's been uh it's been huge for me a huge success out of this i don't think i, I mentioned this i made um I, some have seen the shirt love god love people yes. and mm -hmm. it is um it was a message dealing with obesity and 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 um patients and people dealing with this disease um uh, love god uh to love god love people we are to love all no matter the shape no matter the size uh you love god we and to love god we have to love people and um that's how the um uh, the shirt came about that a, a lot of you probably have seen on my social media. I had a, a, someone tell me a couple of weeks ago, a colleague of mine, he asked, how do you know when you're walking in your purpose? And I was like, what do you mean? And he was like, you are clearly walking in your purpose to make for health and wellness and to you're showing Christ through healthy eating, a healthy lifestyle. And um, it's on all of your social media page. Anytime you talk, you're, you're talking about, you know, health and wellness. You're talking about, you know, obesity prevention. Um, and, and so it's just, it's my love. It's my passion. It's fascinating. You're definitely a role model, not only for young girls, but for all of us yes. women. What message can you give to the women in our audience that are struggling with obesity like you did? 
Uh huh. Uh, go to my webpage, you know, <laughs> uh, keysofe.com. Um, and you can definitely talk to me there. You can talk to me on um, Instagram, Facebook. I'm there. Um, and I, I will, it's more, it's such a, like you said, this is such a sensitive subject. Um, that, and everybody has like their own path. There's no, no person that's just like the exact same. Um, but I do have this, don't ever give up. Um, I had a, a professor that told me, how do you eat, how do you eat an elephant? You know, bit by bit, bite by bite. So don't ever get, give up. It's a, and don't think of weight loss or living a healthy lifestyle as like a race. It's not a race. It's a journey. Um, it's a lifelong journey. So, um, and through Christ, we can do all things Amen. Uh, and always have and develop a good support system around you. You don't want to be around negative people. And it's okay to m remove yourself from that population. Be around positive people that will help you and push you along. It's, it's so wonderful. And I think it makes the journey a lot easier when you have support. Uh, oh, man. Well. Thank you so much, Sister Erica. Truly enjoyed your visit here. Thank you for tuning with us today. Uh, please subscribe to our channels, uh, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. <laughs> and uh, we shall see you again next week on another episode of Heroines of Faith. Mm -hmm.